Well-being, relationships, life. Improve personal development radio. Like what if I treat confidence like it's a muscle, like it's a skill? What if I just exercise it daily? Could that possibly lead to more confidence? Hello, I'm Steve Randall. Today we're talking about something that affects most of us from time to time, but for some it takes over their life and limits their ability to enjoy it and to reach their full potential. Josh Valentine was trapped in anxiety, shyness and depression for over a decade until he discovered a new way of thinking about confidence and the anxiety that was standing in its way. Josh, welcome. Hey! Now, your book is The Ultimate Confidence Game. Now, confidence is one of those things that some people assume you either have it or you don't, but it's not necessarily the case that you're born with it, and certainly that wasn't your experience, was it? Perhaps you can tell us your story with confidence and anxiety. Yeah, confidence is one of those concepts. A lot of people think, ah, I either have it or I don't, and if I don't have it, I guess I just have to cope with it, get used to it. And it means that I'm stuck with anxiety forever. And I totally get that because anxiety is a conditioned response that I had uh, based on my background. At an early age, my parents got a divorce, never saw my biological mom ever since I was six. And so that was at a very early age, I was already experiencing this, this like disconnect with people. And then when I turned 14, my dad passed away from cancer. So now both of my biological parents are gone from this world. And it just furthered my anxiety, my, my conditioned response that if I connect with people, they're going to leave me and I'm going to feel this, this emptiness, this pain. So what's the point of even connecting with people? And so that conditioned me to, to withdraw from social settings and led to a belief that, ah, I'm no, I'm no good. I've, I've got no value to bring to people. I mean, I'm depressed. Like if I join a conversation, how in the world am I going to add value? to it. Like, how are people going to be engaged? So I really saw myself as just this, this waste of space in life. In those moments of anxiety, it's, it's so easy to just believe, oh, I'm stuck like this forever. But it wasn't until I tried something different. I, I challenged that belief. Uh, it was about the midpoint of college. And in that summer, I just, I just had enough. I was tired of standing on the sidelines watching all these people, like confident people, have a great time in conversations. And then I never felt like I could connect. And so I started really questioning, like, I'm so young. Is this the highlight of my life? Like, is, does it not get better from here? Like, why can't I just figure out this confidence thing? Why, why am I so scared to just start a conversation? And so I started thinking, if I do nothing to change, you know, months from now, a year from now, three years from now, what's the future of my life? And the only thing I could see in my mind was it's, it's only going to get worse. Like there's nothing positive to look forward to. And something about that thought that it, it awakened me, like it was just such a scary thought, like of, of just getting worse and worse and worse for the rest of my life that I felt this new energy. There's this energy of, you know what, I, I'm willing, I'm willing to figure this out. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And I believe that that commitment level was ultimately what helped me to overcome anxiety. And I mentioned that part in my book right after, you know, establishing that after self-identifying that we have anxiety, the next logical step is to, well, if we want to change it, we need a new goal. But once we establish a goal, oftentimes we we can lack the commitment. But once we get that commitment of I'm willing to do whatever it takes, then success really is inevitable because you have this unstoppable momentum. Kind of went on a tangent there. There's a lot. There's a lot there to, to the background. Just kind of wanted to check back in with you. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I'm just listen, listening to your story, and I mean, those ages that those two major changes in your life happened. You know, as a six year old, losing connection with with your mom. Um, you know that that's such a big thing at any age, but at, as a six year old, that's huge. And then, you know, losing your dad at, at 14 again. And, and I would say particularly for a guy to lose their male parent, their sort of main male role model at just the time where things are tough anyway when you're 14. You know, that's, that's a devastating time for, 
for, for something like that to, to, to happen because, you know, arguably it's the time you need your dad around most. Yeah, absolutely. And you hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. With my dad, he was my, my only role model. I mean, I was already feeling very lost and, and confused. You know, I already lost my mother. I didn't feel properly nurtured. I didn't feel loved very much. And I was always kind of in the background, angry at my dad for leaving her. And yeah, when he, when he left, it was like, I left my only sense of tie to, to some approval. Like I knew my dad loved me, but when he was gone, it was, it was like all that, like that lack of self-love I hadn't developed yet, just left with him. And then, yeah. And then beyond that, it's the only reason why any of us can't feel confident in any moment is because we haven't conditioned ourselves to, to just love and accept ourselves. So there is that, that crucial point when we have to make that decision. You know, there, there, it's, it's extremely difficult because when a part of us believes it's not possible, how, how, are we, how are we supposed to train, recondition our thought patterns to believe that, no, change, change is possible. We can break out of anxiety. And, and it's extremely difficult, especially when doctors may have told us that, hey, no, you have, a, you have a social anxiety disorder. No, it's it's a condition. You need to take medi- medication for it. And so there's, it's so hard. It, it's it's it can be almost impossible without getting support, without changing your environment, so you can have the just the best support and influence to get yourself to think. Wait, am I willing to experiment? Am I willing to try to see if maybe confidence is possible? Like these are things that people have said. Okay. Anxiety is a disorder. I need to take med- medication. There's something wrong with me. I'm structurally broken. But what if I just, what if I try? What if I, what if I try to feel inside of me? Like, what if I treat confidence like it's a muscle, like it's a skill? What if I just exercise it daily? Could that possibly lead to more confidence? And so those were just, that was like, you know, the, the end of the road for me. It was, it was either I, I, I give up in life. I probably would have considered suicide as well. You know, it's, it's just, it was, it was like, there's nothing great to look forward to in life. Like, what are my options? And so it, it's when we finally just accept that, yes, I'm in pain, but I'm willing, I'm willing to just do something. I'm willing to change my circumstances. That's, that's when we get this new energy, this power. And so the sooner people can get to that, that low point and then decide enough is enough. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to change the sooner they can see that that confidence was always within. Absolutely. And what what age were you when you made this decision that okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna seek out the skills that I need. I'm gonna work on this muscle. Uh, I was 22 or 23. So you're still at that age where you're very much kind of trying to work out who you are, where you fit in, uh, you, you know, where your trajectory is. You know what what am I here for? You're still very much in, in that part of your life. And you've got people around you who maybe seem like they've known all along what, you know, what their path is. They, they're totally, uh, you know, they know what their goal is and they're shooting for it and they're right there. And, you know, that kind of makes it a little harder, doesn't it? But I guess you just have to find a way to work through that. Yeah. Yeah. Especially man, watching people. Yeah. Anxiety is, is this voice of I'm not good enough. And, what it leads us to do a lot, a lot of people who are anxious is compare themselves against other people. It, it's like the, the self-fulfilling prophecy. You believe you're broken, you're stuck, you're anxious, you're, you're just limited in life. You know, other people have it better than you. And so as you walk through life, everything just becomes more proof, more evidence that, yep, I knew it. I'm broken. I'm anxious. That sucks. It's, I just, I just, I got dealt bad cards in life and that's just the way it is. And that's the way it's always going to be. So it just, it makes us really hypersensitive and just jealous, you know, watching all these people, you know, laugh, they look confident, they're charming, they can make, you know, attractive women laugh. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it, it's really hell. Everything is just evidence of, of how low value we are. And, and, and what people often do is they then, especially in sort of a college environment or a school environment or even in the workplace, you know, they may well seek out other kindred spirits. So they'll they'll kind of group themselves with those who are also feeling anxious and uh, and in low confidence. That can backfire because, yeah, okay, as a group, you may be able to find some confidence 
collectively, but chances are you're just going to feel like, oh, okay, well, this is the group I'm in. And, you know, maybe some of the others in the group are feeling even less confident, more anxious than you are. And you, you kind of, you could end up in a downward spiral. Yeah, yeah, totally. That's, uh, you know, the, the saying misery loves company. And it, and it, it reminds me of the dance floor. And, uh, I've been to, I've, I've had a, a few of these experiences where you know, I'll show up, but I'm too scared to actually ask a woman to dance with me. And so I end up being on the sidelines, which, uh, which becomes a really good uh, analogy for, for sideline, being on the sidelines in life. But think about oh. the dance floor. It's like all the anxious guys are just there. And, and so eventually they'll just like kind of huddle together and, and they'll, they'll like try to appear like they're confident, but they're just because they want to use their, their strength in numbers or whatever. It's like, look at us. We're having a good time. We're, we're talking. But it's like, hey, we're not actually on the dance floor yet. And so with these groups of people, like you were saying, you know, some of them may actually be more anxious. And that ultimately doesn't help someone who's anxious change their thought patterns. When, when you're surrounded by, by, the, by the same people with, with the same thought patterns of anxiety, you're, you're only further conditioning yourself to be more anxious. You know, being with people on the sidelines, on a dance floor, did, is that helping you? Is that influencing you to, to feel more confident to get, get on the dance floor? And no, you know, it's, it's, it's when you surround yourself with people who, who are confident, who are working on self-growth and, and loving themselves more. That's the type of influence someone in anxiety needs to start to shift their, their thought patterns, their, their anxious energy into, into confidence. And so, yeah, a big point of, of, the, of the book, The Ultimate Confidence Game, is to start to, to frame life as a game, not to lower the, the meaning of life. You know, it's, life is to be taken seriously, not, not as a game, but it's a game in the sense that there's always higher levels of it. All of us on, on some level know that, that progress is possible. And, and so when we believe that progress is possible, just like some people can get, get addicted to video games. You know, it's like, oh, I got to get to the next level. got to get these experience points. Uh, then we start to really enjoy life. We, we can put things in place. We can set goals and really enjoy the journey of getting there, knowing that, you know, every time I, I face discomfort, every time I, I face my fear of talking to someone I find attractive, every time I speak up in a group setting, even though I'm shy, I'm anxious, I'm scared, I'm going to say something stupid, it's advancing. It's advancing me. And it's the, the greatest game to play because it affects our whole experience. I mean, it's life. The, the more we face those, those challenges of, of anxiety, the, the more confident we feel. And the more confident we feel, the more alive, the more passionate, the more in control, the more powerful, the more like we, we are the captains of our ship. You know, we can steer the direction of our life. And anything that we want to do in life is just a matter of, you know, am I, am I willing to face the discomfort? Am I willing to, to, to face my fears? Am I willing to face anxiety? Once someone who's anxious understands that and really internalizes that, that's, that's when they solve their anxiety. They, they, they just see anxiety as the, the stepping stones to greater confidence, to greater success, however they define it in life. The interesting thing looking at it in levels, in terms of you know going up to the next level, is that whatever level of confidence you may be at there's always you know a, a another level that you might need to take it at i mean we see people who they seem to have it all you know they they've got the money they've got the 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 beautiful marriage they've got amazing kids you know they seem like they're absolutely living the, the best life that they could possibly live and then something will happen that they couldn't have done anything about you know obviously we got the the situation with the coronavirus at the moment you know that Okay, it's not completely indiscriminate as we've seen, but you know anybody in essence can catch it, and a family can be devastated by it. So, to you know, at whatever level of confidence you're at, you know, there's always that potential that something's going to come along and just completely pull the rug from under you, and you're going to have to to find a new level of confidence to to move to. Yeah, exactly, and and that's what that's what makes life fun. I, I it's the progress. It's you know the the most fun times in my life when I when I look back are it just cases where I was so excited about working toward a goal, and sometimes like right after I, I reached the goal, I would feel this the sense of oh man, what's what's next? Like I mean, I was I was it was like I kind of lost that that passion and excitement because I I got the goal, 
but now I'm not working toward anything. And, and so I kind of felt this, this decrease in, in passion and excitement. But when you constantly keep having these goals in life, you know, things you want to work on, maybe you want to be funnier, maybe you want to tell stories better, be more engaging, uh, fitness, you know, you want to get more fit, you want to work on your diet. You know, as long as you keep having these, these next levels of, of the, the more powerful version of you that you want to bring, that you want to create into this world, you, you stay excited, you stay passionate, you stay emotionally invested uh, in, in yourself, in which, you know, as I already mentioned, it, it, it affects everything, your whole experience and how you feel. So I, I believe that, that progress is crucial. And, and in order to, to keep progressing, we, we, we do need those goals. Goals, goals are important. And, uh, and interestingly, uh, someone in, in anxiety is not going to want to set goals because setting goals means facing discomfort, means getting out of their comfort zones, having to face fears. But yeah, it just, just goes back to framing fears as the stepping stones to a better experience in life. I'm Steve Randall. Josh Valentine is my guest. His book is The Ultimate Confidence Game, Defeat Anxiety in Six Levels and Unlock Your Social Potential. So, Josh, what's level one? Identifying your ultimate confidence target. So it's, it's once you establish that you're in anxiety, the next logical step is, well, now you need a goal. And, and that in, it, in and of itself is, is just very liberating because someone in, in anxiety is going to not want to make goals, as we already mentioned, because it's scary. So that's the, that's the first step, you know, create your most confident self. So you got to have a vision of your most confident self. You got to see it. And is it important that you see yourself as that confident person, you know, so you're putting yourself in that goal rather than seeing somebody who you think has the level of confidence or the type of life you want and modeling them? Absolutely. Absolutely. And sometimes it's, it's hard to put yourself in that situation. What would I look like if I'm confident? Because all you've ever done is look at yourself as, as this, this shy and anxious person. And yeah, it absolutely helps to, to model somebody as well. You know, what, what would I look like if I was confident? You know, sometimes that's the best you can ask yourself. What would I look like if I was confident? But all that matters is that you're stretching. You're stretching out of your comfort zone and you're allowing yourself to just believe for a little bit or at least entertain the idea that, Hey, maybe maybe there is a more confident version of me out there, but absolutely, you you have to at some point bring that to your mind so you can start to to channel your your efforts, your intentions, and your energy toward it because that's where the, the the anxious thought patterns start to get shattered. You start to rebuild confident thought patterns because someone who's confident is is, is always going to believe that hey, there's a next level of me out there. I'm I'm dying to unleash that. That that's what that's that's a confident thought pattern. Now, I don't want to give away, uh, obviously, the whole book because, you know, people can go and get the book and that's the, that's kind of the whole point. But um, can we talk through the, the other levels? Are you happy to do that? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So level two. So now you got the goal and level two is, is now, all right, well, what's your motivation level? What, what's your commitment level? That, that's, that's what makes or breaks reaching goals. And so level two is all about ramping up your motivation so, so you get to to the highest level of commitment, which is when you're willing to do whatever it takes. And that's kind of what I mentioned. That, that's, that's, what, that's the energy that, that drove me there. And then level three, once you have that motivation, you got to start to change the way you talk to yourself. And so this is called identity upgrade. You want to change your identity, how you view yourself. You know, are, I, I'm an anxious person. I'm a shy person or I'm confident. I am bold. And with anxiety, as you work on those I am statements, those confident I am statement, you know, I am resilient. I am, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm loving the, the voice, the inner doubt is going to come in. No, you're not. And so the, the next level is about letting go. That is all about, you know, accepting. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I get that there's war. There's internal war in my mind. You know, a part of me wants to set goals, wants to reach toward it, but a part of me is scared and that's my old self. And so when we let go, we, we get to let that, that, that energy that, that's pulling us back from wanting to change. And so the next level after that is deeper. It just, it just dives deeper. You know, you got to become rejection proof at some point. The, the biggest fear of someone in, a, in anxiety is getting rejected, getting some outcome that they didn't want. And really at its core is internal rejection, self-rejection, because that's where the pain is. So once we take 
someone who's anxious through that level of becoming rejection proof, that's when they become internally validated. They give themselves that approval. So now the world does not seem so scary. It's not so scary just to go talk to someone you find attractive or to speak up in a group conversation because you're, you already internally validate yourself. You know, you're, you're not going to reject yourself if, if someone makes a weird face or doesn't laugh at your joke. And then beyond that, that the deepest level of confidence is just straight up unconditional self-love. So that's the, that's the final level, unconditional self-love. And that's all about, you know, loving yourself. Even if you make a mistake, even if you say something that, that comes across as awkward, even if you feel embarrassed or fail at something, it's, it's just the sense of, I love myself no matter what, you know, I love myself for making mistakes or failing. You know, I'm not, I'm a human being. I'm not going to make mistakes on purpose, of course, but I accept it as a part of life. And no matter what, I, I love who I am. If I feel anxious, I love who I am. And, and that's the relationship that, that is ultimately the solution to anxiety. So those are the six levels to unlock your social potential for someone that, that, is, that feels caged in anxiety. And then just beyond that, so beyond that, this is like the little bonus in the book, uh, is connecting with your mission. And I, and I break that down into really two simple questions. You know, who are you? Who are you called to be? You, know, you, you can kind of get a sense that life perhaps is calling you to be somebody. And then the next question is, all right, so, so I got this calling. So what fears or anxieties do I need to face so I can be that person? And, and what's particularly interesting about asking that, that second question of you know, what fears or anxieties do I need to face to become that person is that it gives you a reason to step out of your comfort zone. Just like, just like the, the whole setup of the book is, is a game, you know, it's going to make you a more powerful person. But we need that, that incentive. We, we need that, that motivation. We need something exciting to look forward to. So in order to become who I'm called to be in life, that's why I'm going to face my fears. I'm going to face my anxieties. And so, yeah, so much. It's, it's hard to jam all that into, uh, into this, <laughs> this interview. So much good stuff. Just going to have to read that book and, and check it out. You know, go through all those levels and apply all those challenges. Sure. And, and you know, and, and as I'm listening to you, because uh, I was going to ask – um a question about um you know whether becoming ultimately confident you know gaining that ultimate confidence means that you don't feel any anxiety and you've kind of answered that already that the, the anxiety will still be there and i guess that's an innate thing you know it's 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 a mechanism that's that's within us as humans sometimes you kind of need to feel anxious you know there's a reason for it but what you've kind of reflected is that actually it's the way that you own that anxiety that then gives you the extra power. Yes, yes. And that's such an interesting concept. Is it possible to, to ever reach this, this state of total ultimate confidence where you no longer feel anxiety? And some people have mentioned, you know, maybe Buddha, you know, he reached enlightenment. Maybe he never felt anxiety ever again. And just from my own you know, personal belief is, is anxiety is actually crucial. It's the stepping stone. It's the gym to exercise more confidence. If we ever reached a point where we never felt fear or anxiety again, then we don't have the, the ability to, to grow anymore. It's like there's no more, there's no more point in life. You know, there, there's no more struggle. You're just stuck. You're stagnant. You know, anxiety is important. And, and the way to, to keep becoming more confident is that you identify circumstances where you do feel anxious and then you treat it like the gym. Go exercise your, your confidence while you're feeling scared, like feel the fear, take the action anyway. And then eventually, yeah, you won't feel anxious anymore. But then there's another higher level. Find another circumstance that you're scared. You know, maybe, maybe you're scared to, to share more vulnerably or transparently with, with someone in a conversation. And so that could be your challenge. Absolutely. Well, look, Josh, it's been great speaking to you. I, I'm going to ask you one question. I'm going to be interested to hear your, your answer on this. I mean, you Let's do you it. started off clearly as somebody who was anxious, was shy, was depressed. Would you still say that you're that anxious person underneath? Uh, trying to, yeah, there's a couple of ways to answer that question. The, the shy and anxious person underneath. Uh, no, I, I believe I have transformed that. However, yeah, there, there, is, there, is, there is still more healing uh, to do based upon how I responded to those, those traumatic events from my early childhood, the, you know, the divorce, the death of my father, 
I have not completely healed myself there yet. And who knows? I, I can't even truthfully say that I'll be able to completely heal myself in this lifetime. But what I do believe is that with discipline, I can heal more of it every day. I, I can continue to make progress there. If I tune in and really feel, like search my feelings, really feel, I, I do still feel this this, uh, this this fear just a little bit of connecting with people. And I'm really just like opening my heart to them. Just just this sense of, oh, maybe they're, they're going to leave me and I'm going to be stuck in this. I'm going I'm to feel this, this loss of love. You know, it, it takes time. But the important part is that with time, it, it does get better. It, it really does. That there is more light at the end of the tunnel. You know, it, it, it can be exciting too. There, there's always higher levels. You know, life truly is a game. It's, it's, it's an ultimate confidence game. Josh Valentine's book is called The Ultimate Confidence Game. Defeat anxiety in six levels and unlock your social potential. You can find the link in the show notes. Improve Personal Development Radio is produced by Communication Generation. The producers rely on the expertise of participants and independent advice should always be sought. 